I'm Mara Webster with In Creative Company, and I'm so thrilled today to be joined by the wonderfully talented Tosin Cole to talk all about his TV series, 61st Street. And I was actually really interested in what your character development process looked like for this, because there's so many complexities that you're bringing to the table in terms of the emotional landscape that you're creating for this character, um, and so many textures in the way that you've created him as well. And I was interested in, in what like the research or the backstory creation process was for you and the elements that were most helpful to bring this performance to screen? I mean, yeah, that's a good question. I never had that one before, but um, yeah, I mean, obviously like it starts off with like the script first and foremost, you know, um, that's like the skeleton or the backbone of a character. So I think you start off with that and then, you know, just reading it over and over again and, and just, you know, instinctively, what do you connect with? What do you find? And then, um, I was privileged to go to the writer's room before we started filming. So I had like, you know, conversations with the writers and obviously David Shanks and Peter Moffat. So I had conversations about where they want a character to go. So I kind of had time to kind of think about how I wanted to start it and how I wanted to slowly transition into the changes as he's going through them. And I feel like luckily with the character models, a lot of the experiences he's, ha he's having are for the first time, you know? So it's like, as he's figuring it out, I'm sort of figuring it out. So a lot of the emotions that he's kind of going through are very raw, you know, very raw, very new. And, you know, I try to keep it fresh because everything he's going through is kind of new. So those are the elements. But I mean, in terms of like research, you know, I did a bit of track training, you know, getting the form right and trying to get into the mentality of, a, of an athlete, you know. So I was running a lot. I was going to the gym a lot. You know, obviously we had no gym, so I had to do like a lot of home workouts and a lot of hit workouts and jogging in the cold. So just kind of having that discipline and in, in, in terms of being an athlete, so I tried to do that as much as I could. And um, yeah, man, I feel like with a character like that, you kind of have to draw from personal experiences in terms of like, you know, family, you know what family's like, you know, leading a good example. But at the same time, like, in terms of like the system and the racial discrimination and and the systemic racism to a certain extent, you know, you kind of have to draw from other stories you hear about and and all right, cool, this is kind of similar and how how did this react and how did it feel here and, and I feel like the most important thing for telling the character is just the honesty, you know, just the honesty. So I try to be as honest as possible and try to be as honest to in terms of what he wanted and where he was going and what he believed in, what he fought for. So sometimes if I felt like things weren't really making sense, I'd have the conversations with David Shanks, the showrunner, and if we couldn't solve it, then we'd go to Peter and we'd try to come to a conclusion and trying to figure out the best way to go about it. But luckily I had a cast who were all as dedicated as each other. So you know, conversations like, oh, how does that work for you? Don't you feel like we need something together? Don't you feel like this can help a bit or that? So having a cast that is willing and able to help and, and to figure stuff out with you and give you the time and share so much, it, it kind of helped in developing the character. So, you know, just the honesty. I think the honesty was the, the most important thing for me in terms of developing the character. Yeah. You know, and you, you were talking about some of the training that you did in terms of, of running and the physicality of the role in, in playing Moses. And I know that you were working with Dwayne Chambers, who's an, an Olympic runner. Um, what were some of the things that he kind of instilled in you that you wanted to bring forth in your character? Because there's obviously the physical side in terms of, of form and, and what that takes, but it's also something where running at that level is also so much about the mentality of the sport as yeah. well and the sacrifices that Moses has been making in his personal life yeah. in order to pursue this. So, um, yeah, like literally when I was talking to Dwayne and we had another um, trainer, Brian, when I was in Chicago and they were both were Olympic runners and it was just like, yo, like, like, what do you guys think about? And basically like running is like, the way, it's like, you know, it's the way of, of living basically it's the repetition of certain things, you know what I mean? Like like the repetition in the form, repetition in, in, in the strides, repetition in the race, and just doing it over and over and over and over and over again. And it's like, it does have a trickle effect on your life. So in terms of like repetitions, like that's how they deal with everything, you know? If I repeat it and, and I do it over and over again, then it's going to give me some type of results. You know what I mean? It may not be the results I want straight away, but 
it'll be the result of of what I'm trying to get to in life. And even the fact that, you know, the discipline itself, and I feel like that was one of the most biggest things for me is the fact that Moses was so disciplined, you know? He could have been easily swayed by the things in his environment, been swayed by, you know, his family, you know, as you see later on in the seasons, his father as he comes into 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 the life of sack. He's been disciplined to stay away from that and not to be the average statistic in them, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. So just being disciplined and trying to stay away from that and, and just focusing on his goal, you know, which is to go to college, you know, make a name for himself there. And then, you know, he's, he's on track to be an Olympic prospect. So that was his goal. And the result of that, achieving that goal would be like getting this family out of that situation. So that was his day to day. That was his mantra. You know what I mean? That was his focus. That was his schedule. Go training, come home, take care of the family, repeat, go home. You know what I mean? And that was just it. So, yeah. So, so that was, that was, that was, that was what I took from the mentality in terms of like just repeat, repeat, execute, repeat, execute, repeat, 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 execute. So just, just doing that and, and yeah, just living like that and just taking it and trying to apply it to, to Moses's character. And with some of the elements that you're talking about there in terms of his relationship with his family, what that dynamic is, you know, the ambition and dedication that he has within his athleticism, you don't actually have that much time in that first episode to really build this very full, alive picture of who Moses is yeah. before everything happens yeah. around yeah. him. Um, and yet you give us such a sense even of just like, what's his charisma? Who is he when he's hanging out with his friends day to day? Yeah. So that then when they're all dealing with the aftermath of everything, we know right. kind of where everything started. And so what were the most yeah. important facets to you that you wanted to make sure the audience kind of came in and, and connected to? Because, you know, he's the window into the story for the audience. Yeah, because that, that's one of the things in terms of like prepping, that's one of the things I was like, I was like, yo, like, we don't really have enough time, like, you know, he's such a family, or I feel like he's such a family oriented person, but, you know, we tried to fight for more stuff. We did film more stuff, but we ended up cutting it out just because of edit and stuff like that. So, you know, there were scenes with where him and Joshua are walking and they're talking and you get to see their relationship a bit more. Um, so you got to saw that a bit more, but eventually because of the edit, we just had to cut some stuff out. I don't know whether that's to make time for, for the... I don't know, the duration of the episode. Like, who knows? Uh, I wasn't privy to that conversation. But um, I feel like, yeah, you just try to make... <laughs> I feel like before the incident happened, I tried to smile as much as I could and try to be as open and free as much as I could before the incident happens because after that, you don't really smile as much. You know what I mean? Like, like after that, it's just like it goes into another into another world, a world that he doesn't want to be in, which I call hell, basically. Like, you know, he's, he just, he's just going there and everything gets pretty dark after a while. Everything, the stakes are pretty much high and his life's literally on the line. So just privy to the to the incident, it's like, you know, I tried to be as, be what he was and be what, you know, his family depicted him to be, the nice, young, loving, focused young man that he is. And, and I tried to do that as much as possible with the little we had because it does kick off very quick in our episode life. You know what I mean? It's like set up, boom, we're in. So I just tried to make those moments count as much as possible. And in, in that first instance, you know, of everything that happens where it's him witnessing a shooting and, and taking off running, you know, because of what you've already built, it makes complete sense to us that, that that's yeah. his choice. That's his instinct. Um, and for you it was a lot of it about thinking about what is that gut instinct within this character? Because obviously whenever something traumatic happens, there's so many yeah. facets that just shut down inside of you. And it's not about stopping and processing in the moment. Mm -hmm. um, you know, so was that very much playing the character from a place of gut instinct in that and the moments that followed? Yeah. I feel like, you know, Moses is a, is a smart person. He knows what it looks like, you know, like being a person of colour, being a black man in the south side of Chicago, he knows he doesn't have time to explain himself, you know. Everyone's everyone's in the same loop. Everyone's drug dealers. Everyone's, you know what I mean? They don't care if you're going home. You're all drug dealers. You're all this, you're all that. So he's supposed to leave that night. So it's like, do you want to get arrested and be looped in the, in, in the group talking about drugs and stuff when, you know, you can't afford any, any mistakes, you know, like any mistakes, you know, his scholarship's gone. So he's like, yo, I'm, 
I'm an Olympic runner, man. I, I, I've got some pace on me, so let me just escape. You know what I mean? So him escaping is, in his mind, is the best thing to do. But obviously, it just escalates and escalates and it ends up being the worst decision he ends up making. Um, but yeah, sometimes you just have to go with your instinct in order to save yourself, in order to protect your future, in a sense, you know? Because a lot of these kids in the system, they don't really get a lot of second chances. So it's like, I'll take my chances escaping, you know? Absolutely. And then, and then obviously following that, there's the confrontation with the police officer that, that does catch up to him um, right. and everything that happens in that moment. And that's a very intricate scene on screen in terms of the play by play of what happens when it happens, you know, the moment where he's trying to get past him and the police officer falls down. Um, was that quite a complex scene for the two of you to film together? Because you've got all of the emotional facets that you're bringing into that moment, but also there's a lot of logistical right. elements in that. Like in, in that scene, that was one of the most difficult scenes I think that I was most worried about. I was like, how are we going to do this? Because it's like, you know, in the script that had me like kind of insinuating that I was charging and I was screaming and I was, and I was like, that looks a bit too aggressive. And it's like, if I'd done that, I don't think I would have been innocent. You know what I mean? I don't feel like it's an accident. It felt, it felt a bit too intentional. So I remember like having conversations with Marta and, and David and Peter, like, yo, like, how are we going to do this? How are we going to film this? I feel like we have to get that, that, accident right because if you don't get it right and it seems too intentional then it's like well he clearly spared the guy do you know what I mean trying to escape so I think in that we was definitely trying to make sure that it seemed as accidental as possible like you know what I mean it's just like a clip of each other's um shoulders bumping into each other and, and then obviously the events takes place but um yeah so we tried to make it as as innocent as possible, as as instinctive as possible, also as real as possible, but also just trying to show that, you know, like you couldn't afford to get caught. Like he's like, no, it's over. He's like, no, it can't be over. Like, do you know what I mean? And then as soon as it happens, he's like, why was you chasing me? Like, you know what I mean? He, he was apologizing, he's saying, why were you chasing me? If you were chasing me, this never would have happened. I would have been home scot free. Do you know what I mean? And it's just like, those elements and those in those moments, it's like you're trying to give the backstory and you're trying to, to to plead his innocence at the same time. And at the same time, it's like, you know, he's sorry, then he runs off trying to save his life. But then, you know, he gets he gets in more trouble, it gets deeper than, than what it is. And in the moment where the police officer goes down and he doesn't know the full extent to to what's happened yet, but he knows yeah. that you know everything changes in that instance for him even more so than what's happened just prior to that you know it feels like there are facets of of kind of him starting to realize the ramifications of everything that's slipping away for you was that a really pivotal character moment as well in terms of everything that he's been training for everything that he's pushing for instead of yeah. him feeling like he has a chance to still regain it that that's the moment yeah. where it's completely gone for him it's like I wouldn't say at that moment, I don't think he knew, but I think he knew he was in deeper trouble than what he originally was in. Do you know what I mean? It's like, you bumped up and saw you, you know what I mean? You're running away from the law. You're trying to stop yourself from getting arrested. You know what I'm saying? You're obstructing your arrest or whatever. And then it's like, this officer's bleeding out. Like you've caused this officer to bleed out. Do you know what I mean? It's not looking good. Even if you push your officer, you know, that doesn't look good. If you hear officer, that doesn't look good. But this officer is leaking out at the back of his head. Do you know I mean? That doesn't look great. So I feel like he knows he's in deep, deep, deep trouble. He knows that he's, it's a serious injury. He's hoping that he doesn't die, but you know that if he dies, then he knows that, you know, that's it. Do you know what I mean? And then I think when does he get confirmed? I think he asks if he dies when you see um, in the cell. Then I think, um, Marquise, when he sees Marquise, yeah, he gets confirmed in episode two. And Marquise is like, yo, he's dead. And that's when it's like, oh my God, what do I do now? I knew I was in trouble. I knew they were after me, but now it's like, how do I even escape this? Is there any escape? Do you know what I mean? So, I mean, it just gets worse and worse and worse as it progresses. So I feel like the further he goes onto his journey, he just figures out that it's just, it's just crazy, man. And it doesn't look good. How do I escape this? Because nine out of 10, 10 out of 10 times. 
no one escapes the situation. No one gets out of the situation without paying the consequences severely. Um, but yeah, it just gets worse and worse and worse as it as it goes along. Yeah. You know, and and in terms of him trying to escape it and continue to outrun it, one of the things that he does is to cut his hair off. And I know that for the role, you actually grew your hair out so that you would have that initial look at the beginning. Um, And I've heard you kind of talk a little bit about how then the the cutting of the hair was something that you were able to kind of like personally pull from because that's something that you were also doing for the role. Yeah, yeah, Um, yeah. Yeah, so I, I wanted to ask a little bit about kind of how that transferred over into what you brought into that scene and, and the transformation that you felt that he was trying so desperately to make in that moment. I feel like hair is like a big identity, you know, to, to, to everyone, in it? Especially when, I don't know, that's the longest I've ever had my hair, so I, I kind of grew an attachment to it. And obviously Moses' hair is much longer than what I had it. So I feel like even at that moment, it was like cutting my hair, like, I remember when he had the clipper and I was like, no, 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 wait, I don't cut it yet. Just, I just, I know it's a moment for me. Let me just savor this moment and just really look into what it feels. And even when like, you see like uh, Marquis clipping his hair, like I winced. That's what I first did when, when they cut my hair. So, I mean, I was like, ah, oh, and it was gone. And you just see your hair going down. And it's like, I felt like that was a sense of his, you know, identity. It was a sense of like, probably gave him a, like, I kind of put it, like, it gave him a sensation running, like, when you're running, your hair is just blowing, it's hitting your chest, like, it gives you an insight of how fast you're running, it's like your speed, your speedometer, if that makes kind of sense, like, that's the way I kind of thought about it, like, yeah, like, long hair, like, kind of like a speed, speedometer just running out, and then it's like, everyone knows you from always just running with the long hair, then it's like, you cut it, and it's like, you're almost, that, that person, that person is, doesn't no longer exist now, do you know what I mean? That Moses that's running and everyone thought he he no longer exists. Now nah, he's this, he's this monster, you know what I mean? He's just to society, he's this monster, he's this murderer, he's this fugitive, he's he's the bad guy. When it's like, no, it's not that. So then even in that moment of cutting your hair, you're trying to give yourself a new identity, but you're trying to be reborn. But even in him cutting his hair, it's like he's being reborn into madness now. Do you know what I mean? Like the journey he has with no hair, it's like, oh man, I kind of wish I had the hair now because it was all better when I had the hair. So it's like him cutting his hair is like a new chapter into a life he doesn't really want to be in, into a life that he's tried so hard not to be involved in. And now he's involved deep in through being at the wrong place at the wrong time and making one mistake that ends up costing him his future and his hair, you know what I mean? So yeah, that's how I kind of saw it. And you're also bringing up there, you know, the the external aspect of ha- of how everyone starts to perceive him and how he starts yeah. being portrayed in the media as well. What was the impact that you felt you wanted that to have on him as a character with all of those external viewpoints of, of who he is, which are incorrect, but still right. constantly pressuring in on him? I mean, that's the media, though, isn't it? The media take a little snapshot of your life. You know, it can be anybody. It can be like, you know, I remember like one example that I had in... um. In London, that kind of stuck with me. It's like, you know, like the Mark Duggan thing, you know, when in the London, London riots, when, you know, Mark Duggan was shot and killed by the police. And obviously he had a past or whatever, you know what I mean? But like, they took a picture of him. They took a picture, it was like a snapshot of him. And he looks, he's got quite an aggressive face. He just has a naturally aggressive face, but he's at the cemetery of his, of his daughter holding like a heart, you know what I mean? And they've taken the picture and they've cropped it up and they've made it look like, oh yeah, this guy, and they're talking about this guy, but you know, like he was at his daughter's grave, you know, putting flowers and, and memorabilia for his daughter. But it's like, it's so crazy how they can take something and take it to how they want to do it and use it for that moment, you know? So even in the picture with Moses, like, you know, he's he seems aggressive or he seems shy, but he's actually, frantic he's actually panicking he's actually scared he's actually remorseful so it's all those emotions being blurred into one but then they take that little moment that little snapshot that looks aggressive that can be deemed as aggressive and they get to paint the picture with that you know what i mean they get to paint the picture they get to they get to paint you out to be this person and you never have time to explain anything. you don't have time to explain anything no one's going to back your corner no one's going to be like oh no but this is when he was you know, they're, they're not going to show that. They're not going to show the good sides. They're going to show you to be what they perceive you to be. 
And is that fair? No, it's not fair. But is that life? Yeah, it is life. And that's what happens to a lot of people, you know? A lot of people, a lot of, a lot of victims who have been accused of wrong things or victims who have been victims who have been the victims of, you know, police brutality or, or police murdering these people. So they always try and paint out as a way. And, and those are the things that we kind of have to be mindful and aware of. And it's like, it's happened to Moses. And that reminded me of many other incidents, you know? So I felt like you always want to paint a perfect picture, but if you have a moment within that, say like, say like, I don't know, you know, like your phone, it has like, you know, when you have a live picture and it has like, the moments leading up to the picture. And then in that moment, you can find like your face just changing as it's as it's changing. It's like, all right, cool. I thought this is a bad picture, but I can find the good stuff. But then it's a good picture. Then you're like, no, let me find it when he closes his eyes a little bit. And it's like, oh yeah, he looks, he looks crazy in this one. Let's just post that one and let's run with that narrative and and and, and paint it out what it's to be. So yeah, sometimes that external is not what you want it to be, but it's what they're trying to make it. And I also think in your performance, you know, there's there's obviously the emotional facet of everything that Moses is going through, but there's also physically what does that feel like in his body to be processing that trauma, the tension, the pressure, the stress of everything that follows. And there's different ways that we see that manifest in your performance from just like that idea of what's it like to hold that much tension in your body? Mm-hmm. You know, what's it like to have your body kind of like trying to release it? So like the scene yeah. on the train where, you know, you're kind of like shaking your hand and your foot or like tapping it out and there needs to be some yeah. sort of release, but you can't really do much in that moment. Yeah. Um, and so how did you find those little moments of, of physical tension? You know what? Um. Dwayne kind of, Dwayne, uh, that came from kind of Dwayne and Ma, you know, like um, I tap my feet a lot anyway, like I kind of shake, like if I'm thinking about something, I kind of shake, well, like I, everyone in my family kind of does, it's like a thing that we shake, but I remember like, Dwayne was saying, I was like, yeah, like, he's like, as a runner, you always, you always want to be on the go, you always want to be on the move, like, you know what I mean, and I remember Ma was saying something like, yeah, like, she had a friend that used to run track, and like, like he was very still, but he's always had a, like a, sense to go you're always on edge do you know what I mean it's like you're always kind of waiting for that bang do you know what I mean you're always waiting for that bang to kind of go and it's like obviously being an athlete you're a very you're a kinetic person you're very on the move so it's like where does that energy go when you don't do that you know where does that energy go when it's like you know I feel like every time like Moses was like you know felt away or very, felt very anxious. I felt like he would just go out and run. That was his thing to kind of deal with, like, I don't know, whatever was on his mind. It was kind of, I felt like it was a sense of being like therapeutic to him. Do you know what I'm saying? So even in that cell where he's like doing the chores in the cell, it's like, all right, cool, like, I, can, I can get through this. Let me just do it in the way I know how. So I felt like, um, yeah, sometimes things don't need words. Things don't need words. Things don't need, um, you know, someone to say, oh, are you all right? It's just like, like you can see what he's going through just by the movements and, 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 and just having a moment with himself. So I feel like those are the things that we try to find ways to show anxiety. We're trying to find ways of tension and without having to say it some of the times, you know? So I feel like those moments I try to, you know, I try to make those moments kind of count, especially like, I think, I can't remember when I've done it. I've done that a couple of times, isn't it, in the season? I can't remember when I, I'm trying to think. Did I do it in a scene where when I see Franklin for the first time? I think I did. I can't remember. I can't but, remember, but I want to go back and watch that scene now and, and see if I think I did. Like, I think it's like when I'm making, when he's telling me to hand myself in, I think it's like you're trying to think and you're trying to like, oh, like I don't want to do it. Like my instinct's telling me to run and stuff like that. He's like, he's shaking because he wants to run, but then it's like, he's listening and it's like, what do you do? Because I remember that was one of the hardest scenes I had to do in terms of like making that decision, like of turning yourself in. And you know, like they're trying to get you and you're trying to turn yourself in. It's like, if I turn myself in, it's not looking good, but um, but yeah, yeah. So that's where the shaking kind of came from. It kind of came from Dwayne and and, and Ma. Like they kind of sparked the idea, and I thought kind of like that. Yeah. And and to your point that you were making earlier, you know, obviously everything kicks off so quick in the season in that first episode for you, and 
was it a challenge in terms of creating the emotional trajectory for the character? Because, you know, there's so many external things, internal things that he's responding to and processing. And Mm. you're kind of faced with what does this look like at each stage and how is he responding to it? When can he Mm. allow the emotions to come to the surface? When does he need to try and suppress things? You know, when he's going through the legal system, he's obviously keeping a lot more under the surface. And at the same time, you also have to make sure that you're, you're not just kind of playing to the same beats. Like you still come in with different aspects. Yeah. I remember like, that's something when I read, I was like, bro, like everything happens. You know what I mean? Everything's happening. Oh, this happens and that happens and this happens and that happens and this happens and that happens. And this happens. I'm like, yo, like, when <laughs> I remember saying to like Peter, I was like, when do I get a moment to kind of like take in what's happening? I feel like things are happening, but there's no, um, you don't see how he's feeling. And I don't want it to be like, oh, this happens and that's fine and this happens and that's fine. And it's like, or oh, maybe it's not big enough. And I was thinking, all right, cool, I've got to be really careful about how I react because it's easy to like be sad and cry and, and, and but it's like you don't want it to be still you want every moment to kind of hit a bit harder you want every moment to hit a bit different maybe harder a bit softer maybe nothing at all maybe it's just like you know um because I remember like even the first scene when he gets to to jail and it's like you know and they take his stuff, they take his like his blankets and stuff like that, you know. It's it's easy to just sit down and mope, but it's like, oh man, like, you know, he's getting bullied, you know what I mean? And it's like, he's never been bullied. So how does a how does a guy that's never been bullied, but it's out of his depth handle that? It's like you gotta eat it, but it's like a frustration because now it's like you're open season, you know what I mean? Because he's one, he's not gang, you can't no gang, and it's like, how do I do this? But then I, that can't have the same beat over and over and over again, do you know what I mean? Because then it's like, okay, they, they've taken the stuff and then he he's forced into running, but then he kind of wants to run because obviously he's a runner and he's competitive. And then it's like, all right, cool, I'm gonna do it this way. And I win the race and I have a moment of joy, then it's snatched away again. It's like, all right, cool, like you can't have no happiness here. And then he takes it out on Franklin, you know what I mean? Because he ain't got no one else to take out on. So it's like, it's like, you're trying to find the moments, but you're trying to find it fresh. But then it's like, when you do get your moments, you've got to make the most of those moments. Do you know what I mean? Not everything requires a big reaction. Not everything requires a little reaction. So you've got to try and find, like, the places. And I remember just looking through the script and thinking, all right, cool, I think I'm going to do it here. But at the same time, it's like, I think I did a scene with, um, uh, did a scene with Andrine, who plays my mother. I didn't plan to cry on that scene. That's what just came out. Do you know what I mean? Like, that's what, like, I, I made the promise to, like, to the character, like, oh, I stay strong in front of um, uh, my brother and the family. Always stay strong, like, keep a strong face, like, everything's going to be all right. But at that moment, it's like, what she gave me, I crumbled, man. I was like, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I crumbled, like, I couldn't, I couldn't hold it in. And it was that, at that moment where I felt like he was most vulnerable because obviously it's his mother, his mother's, you know, giving him the words. Like, that's his rock. That's his foundation. That's what he, that's who he does it for. His mother and his, his mother and his little brother. So it's like, his, with his little brother, he can be like, yo, like, you know, it's time for you to step up and you can, you can be the man because I felt like I was a father. I felt like Moses was a father to Joseph and he tried to lead in that example. Hence why Joshua does what he does because in his mind, it's like, oh, what will Moses do? I mean, Moses will find a way. I may not have done it that way, but he would find a way. Do you understand? So sometimes it's like you can plan for these moments. But sometimes when you're just along great actors and, you know, you're bouncing off each other, some, it, the emotion might just, it might just come out. Do you know what I mean? Whether that's my personal, you know, trauma as Toss and Co and it comes out through the scenes or it's just like sometimes you're just in tune with the character. You're so deeply invested into it. And you're sort of immersed in the character, immersed in the character. Sorry, that things just they just happen. You know, what I mean, like sometimes you don't plan to do anything. Sometimes you know you don't plan to to curse and shout, but that's what happens, and that's what you feel at that moment. So sometimes it's a bit of pre-planning, but sometimes if it's natural, you just have to let the moment happen. You have to be truthful to that moment, be truthful to that feeling, and just let it out. So sometimes it's like a bit of pre-planning, and sometimes things just kind of happen on a day, and it's just like, all right, cool. 
that felt right, that felt natural, that felt truthful, it felt honest. So I'm gonna just let it follow me and take me to to where I need to go in order to have the journey of the scene. I love those details and and kind of moments like that that happen on screen. And I think all of those emotional facets that you were just talking about is what makes it such a great performance to be able to have the opportunity to watch. And thank you so much for talking about it. Really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.